Now's the Hauser guys. The most important book in the history of photography. It is Joel Meyerowitz's Seeing Things, a kid's guide to looking at photographs. It shows them the important things in photography. And by looking at these important things, we can get inspired as well. You know, you look through this book and it is a gold mine, a fantastic imagery. You know, look at this. This is, you know, a wonderful picture. You know, this is a, a photographer called Sally Gao. And here he's talking about light and happiness. What wonderful themes. How can you find a tutorial that's going to teach you about light and happiness? You know, he says here, and this is what I love also about this book, that is, is broken down in a lovely conversational sort of way. The Joel Meibus says, is, is people ask me all the time, how do I know what to take a picture of? And I answer, whatever it is that makes you stop, photograph that. He then goes on to explain. With this photograph, Sally Gao shows us how surprising and sculptural laundry can be. Does that not encourage somebody to pick up a camera, to go out and to just photograph the things? It is so refreshing to see ideas in photography broken down into simple, easy to digest and, and understand statements. They are suggestions. There is nothing in here that says you must do this or you must do that. And, you know, this is not technical talk. This is not talking about how you do this and exposures and all this kind of stuff. None of those things exist in this book. It's more about the pure joy of looking at it. You know, here's Mary Anna Mark, you know, the, the man, <laughs> you know, the, the elephant around his neck. And it's the same sort of idea again. You know, that he's talking about, you know, the right moment. This is, this is obviously, you know, Cardio Brisson kind of territory, you know, the decisive moment and stuff, but it's broken down for children. It's, it's two pages. It's two pages telling you, telling a child what they need to know. That, you know, the elephant is so magnificent that you might think this is what this photograph is about. Joel Meibitz goes on to say, you know, when I first saw the picture, I was excited by the physical presence of the elephant and the ways every trunk looped around the trainer's neck. But then he goes on to say that, you know, Marianne and Mark was quick to notice the little, the little details, give the picture the, its grace. And this is where the benefit of learning to actually absorb a photograph comes in. You know, he's talking about the belt, the trainer's hands, the bracelets, also perfectly positioned that they follow the curve of the belt, which echoes the loop of the trunk. Now, these are all the tiny things that when you're looking to improve your photography are so vital to elevating a little bit, to be aware of these kind of things. So when you go back to basics with a book like this, that is written by a man who has an enthusiastic and infectious passion for photography and a knowledge to pass on, it only can help you better. You know, our old friend, William Eggleston, <laughs> he always gets to surface around here on the channel, doesn't he? But here, always using as an example is to say, look, as familiar as a bottle of soda is, here it is, presented as a luminous floating double image of itself. And then going on to say that the fact that Eggleston stopped to photograph this surprising moment of beauty reminds us to look more carefully to remember the most banal objects, most commonplace afternoons contain unexpected mystery and wonder. And and I also, you know, one of the things, I, we so often don't get exposed to, you know, photographers who have gone before us. There was, you know, the example earlier with the, the billowing, you know, the, the laundry. That's a new photographer. Here we have, you know, this lovely, dramatic image, which I'm sure many of you have seen before. I'm going to peek around the side here like that. Of, you know, Paul Strand. Talking about eye contact and how important it is in an image. I love this, this, you know, taking a simple contact, a uh, contact, contact, <laughs> I'm getting tripped up by the book here, taking a simple concept and explaining it in a way that the kids go, okay, love it, get it. We don't need to talk about the background here. We don't need to talk about, you know, where this was taken and everything that was going on and the zone system and the use of lenses and stuff. We want to talk about the eye contact, why the eye contact makes this photograph so powerful. So then hopefully the next time somebody goes off, a child, you, and you're taking pictures of people that you go, aha, I remember that simple concept. 
and I'm going to put it into practice to give my images more connection, more personality, more, more depth. So many people, I think, go through life, they, they, they are given a camera, they're given the, uh, the opportunity to take photographs and there is a lack of information that goes beyond the technical. And, and that's what makes me sad. I, I, I don't like the fact the basics of seeing are not being passed on to people. I want my little boy to go off to the world and not to see it in just the ways that everybody else is telling you to see it, that, that he gets told, you color inside the lines, do all these things. And a book like this, the seeing things, this, you know, John Mayovitz, in this, and it is a slim volume, it's not, you know, it's not a huge book, right, has wrapped up in an easy to digest, wonderful way of looking, everything that I get excited about photography, that I want to share with my little boy, we share with you, to say, look, you know, these are photographs that, you know, often people will show them, Say, so look at this photograph. Isn't this isn't this a proper, well-meaning photograph or something? You know, like all the art classes that we had at school, where people were just like, "Oh, well, you just, you know, th this is important because I say so." If we also take the time to give the photographers of the future a roadmap that says, "This is how you speak with this medium. This is the things you can do." Now, take those ideas and run with them. And there's this picture of Lee Friedlander with the um, <laughs> in this shadow. He looks like he's got this, some sort of crazy hair sort of thing going on there, which, which I love. Also, that's a, a, a really good point. A lot of these photographs are not heavy. They're not meaningful. They are photographs that once, like the text, have a simple purpose. There's not too much in them. They're amusing. They're fun. The kids are going to love looking at them. He says, your shadow seems to just tag along, but you animate it, you are its director. And Joel goes on to talk about, you know, Friedlander was always on the lookout for new ways to see what trouble his shadow can get into and how much fun he can have watching it. I, if, if, if this channel can do half as much, even a quarter, a fraction of instilling inspiration into photographers, both new and old, old, <laughs> new and experienced, young and old, uh, th then we will have done our job, that we will have helped to inspire people, to not let these ideas disappear. These, the, the, the people who are sharing these things, you know, Joel is not a young man. Sorry, Joel, <laughs> right? And there is a window that is closing of knowledgeable people who are willing to share their experiences, their knowledge, their passion, their enthusiasm with the younger generation in a way that is accessible. I'm, as I've been talking, I've got Albert, Albert so again, me with the, with the names, you know, Albert Lardo Morel, and I'm sure if I've mispronounced that, but this is, look at this, these lovely beams of light. I'll put the picture up on screen because this, this light, this light is killing that light, you know? But he's talking about seeing the light, that light is elemental and it's everywhere, it's sunlight, moonlight, starlight, firelight, streetlight, candlelight, even as lasers and neon, all right? And in, he talks about, you know, to see the light is to understand something more clearly or in a new way, as Albalado, Morel's photograph of light beams falling in a polka dotted pattern on the floor. It's encouraging thought in photography. I have not been as inspired to take a photograph or to try something new, to go out and, and you know, see what I can find, as I have been by this book. This book, and, I, and this is actually the second copy that I have of it. I don't have actually two copies. This second copy I bought, I gave one, another one to a, a friend of mine's son, you know, in, in the hope, I think, the most powerful introduction to this art form that is at once both technical and aesthetic. Uh, you know, 
and we need to spend more time cherishing, encouraging and promoting the aesthetic. Because when we do that, our work improves. We can make not more meaningful work, but work that resonates with people and we can help to give the people coming behind us a guide that says, you know, there is more to making images than just crazy processing or whatever it is you want to do. Make things with substance too. If you'd like to find out more about Joel Meyerowitz's actual photography, and it is lovely, I think it's wonderful, check out this video over here. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.